Hey friends, the Paludarium project began exactly 100 days ago as an empty terrarium waiting to be transformed into a fascinating mix of aquatic and terrestrial environments. In this video, I documented the journey from the first planning steps to the completion of this unique ecosystem. We will be able to observe how the Paludarium will develop over time. We will add a few more animals later, but more on that later. Step 1. The Planning the first thing I did was to sit down and draw a sketch to get a rough idea of what the paludarium should look like in the end. This phase laid the foundations for the project. From the selection of suitable plants to the planning and structure of the paludarium, the implementation of the plan began with the construction of the basic structure. The layout, a stable framework, was created to support the different levels of the paludarium. Here I'm just taking care of the layout. As you've just seen in my sketch, we have a water and a land part. We'll take care of the land part first. Here I work with a special aquascape glue that reacts directly to absorbent cotton. You have to be very careful with it. The construction process was a creative challenge. The shaping of the landscape and the placement of stones, caves and roots required precision and aesthetic sensitivity. Now we're going to work a bit more with silicone and close the gaps that are too big. We are almost finished with the first step and the layout is slowly taking on a really good shape. Now I put the filter mat in and that's it! The idea of creating a paludarium with both water and land areas slowly took shape. So far we are finished with the rough layout and ready for the next steps. Step 2. Substrate and water. I decided to use a black aquarium gravel as substrate, which I then distributed evenly in the tank. The aquarium gravel also goes very well with the slate stones. Then I removed the remaining aquarium gravel that had fallen onto the stones with a brush. Next, I filled in the places where not so much aquarium gravel had arrived with a full cup of aquarium gravel. Last but not least, I used a paintbrush to even out the substrate a little more. I came up with the idea and thought we should put a plant in the paludarium, a South Sea palm also known as Biophytum sensitivum. Let's see how it goes down as the first plant in the paludarium. Perfect! Now all that's missing is the water, which we'll do very quickly. Step 3. Planting The choice of plants was crucial to the success of the paludarium and a crucial step in bringing the ecosystem to life. The choice of plants was not only based on aesthetic considerations, but also on ecological considerations. The plants should not only improve the visual appearance, but also support the living conditions of the inhabitants. Ficus scandens Solanum evolvulifolium It was important to choose plants that could thrive in both wet conditions and dry land. The plants were arranged to create a natural structure and hierarchy. Larger aquatic plants and mosses were placed in the lower areas of the water basin, while smaller aquatic plants adorned the edges. Land plants were arranged in different levels of the land area, with creeping plants covering the bottom and mosses decorating the background areas. Ball moss Decranum scoparium Solenostoma tetragonum H. 
Hypnum Compressive Format. Now it's time to let your creativity run free. You have to develop a certain eye for where to place which plants and mosses so that everything is in harmony with each other in the end. So that plants and animals get along well with everything. Here's a little time lapse for you, so enjoy it and sit back. Oh, I forgot to add the shore stones to the paludarium. We'll do that quickly. Oak leaves. Birch leaves. Oak leaves have antibacterial properties that can help to inhibit the growth of harmful bacteria in the aquarium. This can be particularly useful in promoting fish welfare and improving water quality. Spirodella polyriza Salvinia minima Almost done! Now we're watering the plants and mosses again so that they have a certain amount of basic moisture in them again. Look there how beautiful our paludarium looks. But wait a minute, I haven't told you yet. We are building a paludarium in two tanks, that is. It's going to be a large paludarium divided into two tanks. You'll soon understand what I mean. But wait a second. I have an idea. We'll do the whole thing. Like this. That's great. Or what do you say? I opted for the Chinese elm, as you can see in the video on the right, and swapped it with the South Sea palm. It is a versatile and attractive tree species that is valued for its characteristics and adaptability in various applications. The Chinese elm also blends well into different landscapes. That's why I thought it had to be the first Bielik catch in the paludarium. Now our first paludarium is finished. Yes, our first paludarium. That's right. Can you still remember when I said I wanted to build two paludariums in one paludarium? And that's exactly what we're doing now. So let's start again from the beginning, in fast forward. Now let's take care of the left paludarium. Maybe you remember the sketch at the beginning of the video. If you were paying attention, you would have noticed that I drew two tanks. So let's get started from layout to completion. First of all, of course, we took care of the layout so that it would fit in perfectly with the other paludarium. And it's so fast, it's ready. Now we have to attach the filter mat to the bottom of the tank and place the second layout in the paludarium. Done? The rough layout looks pretty good. Now quickly plant our Chinese elm, and don't forget the mosses and other climbing plants, that's it. Another little time lapse for you, and we can finally get started with the exciting project, 100 Days of Paludarium. I am very curious to see how everything will develop.
Now add our climbing plants and that's it. Day 1 to Day 10 Finally we are ready and our adventure can begin. Come with us on the incredible journey. A short summary, paludariums are living mini ecosystems consisting of an aquatic area and a terrestrial area. The water area can be home to different types of plants and fish, while the land area is perfect for reptiles, amphibians or even plants that prefer high humidity. The design of a paludarium requires careful planning to meet the needs of all inhabitants. I think we've done that here. What do you think of the paludarium project so far? Please let us know in the comments. The first few days were characterized by establishing the balance in the paludarium. Water quality and temperature were carefully monitored to create optimal conditions for the aquatic inhabitants. Plants and animals were carefully selected to promote harmonious coexistence. Day 10 has dawned and the paludariums have slowly settled in. Now it's time to put the first animals into the paludarium. I have decided on the Turkish Newt, also known as Nurergus strauchii. The Turkish Newt is characterized by its striking body markings. The males have an orange to yellow belly coloration during the mating season, while the females have a rather inconspicuous gray or brownish coloration. The body structure is slender and the caudal fin is pronounced, which enables efficient locomotion both in water and on land. The Turkish Newt plays an important role in the ecosystem as an indicator of water quality. As they are sensitive to pollution, scientists use them as an indicator of changes in aquatic habitats. The Turkish Newt feeds mainly on insects, larvae, worms and small invertebrates. They themselves are on the menu of various predators, including birds, larger amphibians and water dwellers. Do you have an idea what we should call the two newts? Please write it in the comments. The names with the most likes will become the names. Day 10 to 50. A number of challenges arose during the 100 days, such as fluctuations in the water parameters and the appearance of algae. Through consistent monitoring and targeted care, it was possible to maintain a stable and healthy paludarium. The right lighting proved to be crucial for the growth of the plants and the behavior of the animals. Controlling the climate, especially the humidity in the land area, was also of great importance in order to meet the needs of the various inhabitants. But slowly everything took its course. The plants and mosses began to grow firmly. Observing the life cycle, from the reproduction of the inhabitants to the growth of the plants, reflected the natural flow of life in the paludarium. New generations of fish, larvae and juveniles contributed to the vitality and dynamics of the ecosystem. I have observed that the courtship behavior of guppies is not only an aesthetic spectacle, but also an important aspect of their reproductive strategy. The visual and acoustic elements of these courtship rituals illustrate the amazing diversity of nature and offer aquarium enthusiasts the opportunity to delve deeper into the fascinating behavior of these colorful fish. Our newts have also settled in for so long, I often see them chilling on the tree. Maybe the view is better up there. They are also very often out and about in the water, exploring the area. From day 40 to 50, I noticed that the plants in the paludarium proved to be vital and adaptable. Aquatic plants have transformed the water basin into a flourishing underwater landscape. The fish population developed splendidly, and the diverse aquatic flora contributed to a harmonious balance. What do you think of the tank so far? What do you like best? The terrestrial inhabitants, including amphibians and invertebrates, have settled in well. Observing the different species in their natural behavior offers fascinating insights into their habits. We are halfway through our trip and have already experienced and learned a lot. Now it's time to continue the journey. I'm very excited to see what else we will experience and how the paludarium will develop. Day 50 has dawned. In the meantime, our paludariums are making a very good impression. They are now well run in and the small ecosystem is presenting itself from its most beautiful side. Plants and mosses are all growing magnificently. Our animals are also doing very well. Hey you! Do you have an idea what my name should be? Please write it in the comments if you have an idea. And don't forget to subscribe if you like my videos. It is very exciting to observe the behavior of the newts, 
It looks as if they are playing with each other. Or my guess is, rather that they are in the mating season, and therefore they show such behavior. What do you think? I sometimes sit in front of my paludarium for hours and watch what happens. It's exciting and relaxing. Right now it's feeding time for the newts. It's very exciting to see how they hunt and then eat their prey. First step, see if it is food. Second step, touch it and snap it shut, done. Life underwater as well as above water is closely connected and plays a decisive role for the ecological balance in our paludarium. Our fish are also very colorful, especially the males have developed beautiful patterns and colors. We have now reached day 70 and have been able to learn a lot and gather many new impressions in this time. In these 70 days, we have gained deep insights into the dynamics between life underwater and above water. We have learned how important proper care and monitoring of the environmental conditions are for the balance in this mini ecosystem. Day by day, we have taken into account the needs of the various inhabitants, be it regulating the water quality or optimizing the light conditions. The experiences of the first 70 days have not only broadened our knowledge, but also deepened our appreciation for the diversity of life on our planet. We look to the future with anticipation, ready for more days of discovery and learning in this unique paludarium. Meanwhile, the 80th day has begun. I have just been busy cleaning the paludarium. Cleaning the paludarium not only marks an act of care, but also an opportunity to appreciate the beauty and complexity of this mini ecosystem. I am amazed at how quickly our mosses have grown in all this time. They simply look beautiful. Removing excess sediment, checking the water quality and adjusting the environmental conditions are crucial to ensure that the paludarium continues to thrive. What I haven't mentioned yet is that both paludariums run without a filter. That is indeed interesting. The fact that your paludariums are running without filters shows an alternative approach to maintaining and sustaining the ecosystem. Most aquariums and paludariums use filters to purify the water and stabilize the environmental conditions. Running without a filter certainly requires closer observation and care. Day 100. After 100 days of intensive care and observation of the paludarium, it can be said that the project has brought both successes and challenges. During this time, numerous experiences have been gained, challenges overcome, and successes celebrated. The paludarium has developed into a living ecosystem that is home to an abundance of plants and animals. Maintaining a paludarium over a period of 100 days was an enriching experience that provided deep insights into the dynamics of such an ecosystem. Through continuous observation, care and adaptation, a balanced environment was created that was suitable for both the plants and the animals. Caring for the paludarium has led me to a deeper respect for nature and its complexity. Each organism plays an important role in the ecosystem and it is important to understand and respect their needs. The documented experiences and insights will not only be of value for future projects, but will also help to deepen the understanding of the needs and interactions in paludariums. With the end of this 100 days of paludarium documentation, I close this chapter and hope you enjoyed the project. This tank is not the only project I have been working on. Right now I'm building Ant Island. There will be a huge island, crowned by the majestic ruins of a castle where the ants will rule. So, if you don't want to miss anything and you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.